and the government knows it doesn't want that competition. Again, that's very, very important reasons why they enacted the income tax and the inheritance tax, not so much for the money, although, of course, they want every dime they can get, but they want to make it hard for families to establish uh, independent power from the state. So we want more rich people. We want more well-to-do people. We want fewer poor people. And if we if we want those kinds of goals, we want more capitalism. We want less government. I mean, that's that's the, the, those are the two the two rules. We want less government interference in the economy, less of an empire, less of a you know. But of course, as, as it is now, I always think the the nudo scanners at the airport are a perfect uh, symbol for what the government today. It's actually able to take naked pictures of of uh, your children. And you know the the uh, the thugs from the TSA can be yucking it up at lunch hour back there in the in the room looking at uh, pretty women naked and so forth, and nobody seems to. Care. <laughs> How come nobody cares about this? So well, I think it's, know, it's that, up to us as libertarians to alert people to what's going on. It's too easy to ignore what's happening. We're living in a very historic, evil historic period of vast state growth, and it's our calling and our job as libertarians to ring the alarm bell. Yeah, well, so that was what I wanted to get to, and you brought it up anyway, which is the nobody caring, I guess, is is not the whole point, but part of it is what's happened to our culture. And I guess, Sonny, I sound like an old man or something just because I grew up in the 1980s when the culture was completely different, where where it seems to me, and maybe I'm just making this up and I'm idealizing my childhood or something, Lou, but it seems like if in 1982... They had said, we're putting cameras up everywhere. We're taking naked pictures of your daughters at the airport. We're making you line up and, and look at your socks because we made you take off your shoes and shut up and don't you crack a joke or we'll ruin your life. And, and this just, and look, we could go on and on. The NSA reading all our emails and tracking all our Google terms and, and the torture and the everything else. I, I want like your wisdom about, um, you know, how far uh, low our culture has been brought by this decade of war already. How different, I know, I'm, I don't mean to sound too much like a commie, but how different as a people we are after all this time already. It's not, like you just said, well, we'll sit there and, and tolerate this at the airport. Virtually no one even cares. Well, you know, I think in one, in one sense that's correct. And certainly, uh, I mean, I can tell you the 60s, it would have been even tougher to get, to get away with it in the 60s than it was in the 80s. So, yes, the, we're seeing, again, tremendous state growth. We live in a, in a soft fascist state. Um, it's getting harder, however. And so there's, yes, terrible, terrible things going on. Most people are ignoring it. But you know what? Most people ignore everything anyway all the time. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, you know, and you can sort of understand it. I mean, they've got enough to do to raise their families, earn a living, mow the lawn, go to church, you know, and all deal with their mother-in-law, whatever. They've got many other things on their plates. Things, significant social change always comes about either for the good or for the ill, by minority, so it only it only takes a minority. So first of all, it should not discourage us that we're a minority. We're never going to get the quote unquote people uh, to go along with us. On the other hand, it is possible to sway the people by means of an activist, well-educated uh, minority. And again, that's the, I just want to end on sort of on a on a uh, Albert J. Nock note. He he was once asked about you know sort of how you can save the world, and he said. He said, uh, well, you, you know, you can't save the world. He said, there's, you know, there's only one person that you actually have control over, and that's yourself. So you can make yourself a better person. And, uh, you know, from our, from our libertarian standpoint, we do control ourselves. We can become beacons of liberty if we learn economics, we learn real history, we learn about libertarian political philosophy, all the various things, and there are many other things worth knowing, of course, literature and art, and but as libertarians, those key issues of you know where the state collides against society, we can know about it, we can be able to explain it to people, then people will come to you for advice, and they'll come to you because they know you know. So the most important thing is to educate yourself, but even though the state is you know growing out of uh, uh, unbelievable certainly nothing like this ever in american history not in the great in the new deal 
Uh, you probably have to go to the depths of World War One or World War Two to see the kind of state growth that we're seeing right now. But I think there are more and more people who are waking up. Also, the state is a very stupid institution, and as it becomes bigger and bigger, it becomes more and more bureaucratic. It can't do anything. You know, they can't they can't plug the BP oil well. They can't uh, prevent Hurricane Katrina and all the other stuff they you know allegedly talk about doing. They can't prevent the depression from taking place. They're being shown up as more and more incompetent, more and more rip-off artists. You know, to the extent, for example, that we alert Americans that the average American makes half what the average government employee makes. Everybody is propagandized to think, oh, the poor teachers, the poor postman, or whatever. You know, think, oh, they're not earning very much. Of course, they're they're all ripping us off, and they are they are part of the ruling class, albeit at the lower end of the ruling class. Uh, so the sort of libertarian class analysis that I just uh, hinted at, as Mises. Uh, Hume, Labuetti, Rothbard, all the great guys talked about, there are two classes in society. Not the crazy Marxist class analysis, which was a distortion and a theft of the earlier libertarian class analysis, but this, there are two classes in society, those who live off the state and those who pay for the state. Now, democracy sort of smudges that and makes it less clear, to, but still, there are some people in this society who are vastly uh, state negative and others who are state positive I and mean, people who live off the state other people who pay for the state so to the extent we can raise people's consciousnesses about their fact that they're being ripped off that it's not only all the killing it's not only the, the depression and so forth but the people in the california state government who earn these unbelievable pensions you know, for vast amounts of money for the rest of their lives for, and can retire at the age of 55 after a non-work life of 20 or 30 years, to the extent we can raise people's anger, just anger, and uh, we can we can actually have a chance of changing things. I think, this, I think that, that, you know, as is always the case in human society, there's a race between power and market. There's a race between the state and society. And... They actually don't, I don't believe they have the future on their side. I think we have the future on our side. But gosh, only if we really roll up our sleeves and work every bit as hard as we can. Well, you know, it seems like the biggest part of that class war, because, I mean, it's true that, first of all, there is a difference between people who are struggling to make it in the world and people who have everything at their fingertips and only, a, you know, their biggest problem is which yacht they to, to pick out, um, you know, uh, even though they may be Senator collecting John tax Kerry, dollars. for example. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, any anyone in the Senate, for example, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing is, uh, well, lots of different things. I guess one, one thing to say here is, um, well, it goes back to the idea of the rich white man's anarchy. And, and at least my belief, Lou, that libertarianism is, no, it's the little guy's anarchy. It's the right of every single person, even the grandson, the great-grandson of a slave, to own property, to be an entrepreneur, to improve his station in life, to make, to, to live his life confident that his children are going to live better than him. That's the anarchy that we seek, right? And so, um, you know, it seems like, uh, well, and then I'll say one more thing here. I, I had a great segue to tie all those things together, but that part fell apart. But so I want to ask you this, um, which is that are the Marxists right, though, about um, the the relationship between capitalism and imperialism, that imperialism is really the last stage of capitalism, that as long as we have a monopoly state and not the, the Walter Blockian anarcho-capitalism that we all wish we live in, but as long as there's a state, the richest people are going to buy it up and they're going to have an empire, pretty much right. I mean, aren't the commies right about that? And is the only solution then have no state at all? Otherwise, it'll turn into an empire at its first opportunity? Well, it's certainly true that the only solution is to have no state at all. Because the state, you know, there's a wonderful essay on LuRockwell.com by Stefan Kinsella on that, where he asks, what is anarchy? And he says it's simply, you know, the the view that you think it is never morally permissible to use violence or the threat of violence against the innocent. That's that's all it means. So do we want a society in which the least possible violence or threat of violence is used against the innocent, whether by the small amount of private crime or the vast amount of public crime? Yeah, of, of, of course that's what we want, and, and it's in everyone's it's in everyone's benefit. Doesn't mean 
that we're going to have you know equality doesn't mean that equality is actually a, a goal. Some people are smarter than others. Some people work harder than others. But the fact that every person should be able to achieve to their maximum desire and ability, you know, that's that's a free society. And we had something we've had at various times in American history more like that than we have today, at least for certain segments of the population. And we want it, of course, for everybody. So that's, you know, that 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 is the essence of libertarianism. But there's no question that the state has always had, I wouldn't say it's the last, you know, it's not the, I think Lenin was wrong, it's not the last stage of, of capitalism, because they were pre-capitalistic empires. Now, they couldn't be anything like the size of the of, of this current empire and the, and the economic power of it. But ancient Egypt had an empire. Babylon had an empire. Syria had an empire. Athens had an empire. Uh, you're, getting, you're getting into more, into more uh, market production when you're talking about Athens. And there was even market production, of course, in Sumeria and Assyria and Babylonia. And, and, but these weren't capitalist systems in the sense that we would describe them today. So this may be this. Uh, I, I think uh, just as the state wants to control every aspect of our lives here at home, and that's actually always their first incentive, they always are concerned about controlling and ripping off and preventing from revolting the cash cows in the in in their own uh, little dotted uh, line on the map they call the border. Um, but yes, they want to do. They want to get other people too, and. It's a great way to get to fool people into supporting the government. Oh, all those bad guys across the river, they're going to get us if we don't go get them first. And uh, uh, Mr. Smith here is going to provide us the arrows and the bows for a very cheap price for the right. government. Right. So, I mean, that's the I think it goes right back to the early <laughs> earliest days. So, yes, there's em- empire is simply another aspect of the state. The state wants to erect an empire against us here. It always wants to erect an empire to the extent it can get away with it over other other people's too, that's just the state. So uh, you know, as libertarians, we know the state is an evil institution. It's it's uh, totally destructive. Uh, it involves t- you know theft on a vast scale through redistribution and taxes and and all the killing and very nasty apparatus. The state. So we have to be dedicated to delegitimizing it, to criticizing it, to doing everything possible to oppose it. And there are various, you know, various people can make various choices about how they're going to do that. But it seems to me the one choice you should not make is not to be an activist against the state. Indeed. Well, uh, an obvious place where people can go if they really want to get educated about these things is Mises.org. I mean, there's there's no better place to start. And, uh, of course, LewRockwell.com, you'll find the links all over the place. Uh, from there, it's the best read libertarian website in the world and for very good reason and uh so yeah i'll just conclude with uh thanking you for all your work lou and your time on the show today really do god great to be with you and with me over time here oh sure and let me mention just one thing for the future i'm chairman rather than president now oh you know i never get that right Doug I french is, is president chairman i like chairman better it sounds private not public <laughs> well that's a that's a point <laughs> but i think actually the government chose it stole it from the private sector president was originally a private title yeah they always do that don't they they did yes, that they with do. socialism and with liberalism and with everything else too all right well that's the way it they're is bu- they're a bunch we're of thieves, thieves. <laughs> intellectual property theft no oh no that's a different show okay thanks lou thank you scott